Cincinnati, Ohio, site of one of the most intriguing sports stories of the year, 1977. For three consecutive seasons, from 1974 through 1976, the Cincinnati Bengals had finished second to the Pittsburgh Steelers in the National Football League's toughest division, the AFC Central. In 77, the football fans of Cincinnati came to Riverfront Stadium to be part of the season the Bengals would finally break through the Steeler jinx. And this is the story of that remarkable and memorable season. Coach Bill Johnson, it was to be a season with a new look. On defense, the Bengals had installed their two first-round draft choices, Eddie Edwards of Miami at left tackle and Wilson Whitley of Houston at right tackle. And both had played impressively during a superior preseason. The opening game of the regular season brought a home sellout crowd of 54,000 who came to witness the 15th renewal of the dead-even Ohio intrastate rivalry with the Cleveland Browns. Browns gambled successfully from the opening series of the game, while the Bengals struggled unsuccessfully to get their high-powered offense in gear. Every key play seemed to be just out of bounds or just out of reach for quarterback Ken Anderson and the frustrated Bengals. got away with a big one, the first victory ever for a visiting team in a Cincinnati home opener. In week two, the NFL's all-time leading passer, Ken Anderson, unleashed an attack reminiscent of the old days. Number 45, Archie Griffin, led all rushers and receivers and also completed his first NFL pass. A floater for a touchdown to fellow running back Lenville Elliott, number 36. The Seattle Seahawks were outmanned and overpowered in every phase of the game, both offensively and defensively, as the Bengals found they could score practically at will. Ken Anderson led an offense which rolled up well over 400 yards, and the Cincinnati Express appeared to be back on the track. The next week in San Diego, both ends of the key trade of 76 showed well. Coy Bacon kept constant pressure on the quarterback, but San Diego had the last word. The two touchdown catches by Charlie Joyner in a 24-3 upset win for the Chargers. Week four in Milwaukee, the Bengals continued to search for the solution to their slowest start since 1971. Against the Green Bay Packers, Ken Anderson completed 15 of 20, including a scoring pass to Isaac Curtis, and he also came through with a third quarter, 75-yard drive to the winning touchdown. Tony Davis scored the game winner as the Bengals defeated the Packers 17-7 and prepared to move on to Pittsburgh for a Monday night encounter in a stadium where strange things always seem to happen.
Thanks to some typically weird happenings, the Steelers led 13 to nothing when John Reeves replaced Ken Anderson, who had suffered a thigh injury. Trailing again by 13 with a minute and a half left, the entire Bengal roster seemed to collaborate on a block punt, which eventually turned into a Cincinnati touchdown. Chris Barr's onside kick was recovered by Mel Morgan, and the Bengals had one final shot at their first victory in Three River Stadium. But although they outgained the Steelers by a wide margin, the Bengals again came up on the short end of the scoreboard. Rookie fullback Pete Johnson got the Bengals off to a roaring start the next week against the surprisingly undefeated and Super Bowl bound Denver Broncos. But then Ken Anderson re-injured his thigh. The Broncos came back to win 24 to 13. After six games, the Bengals were a depressing two and four, and alone in last place in the AFC Central. The season's turning point occurred in week seven against the always rough Houston Oilers as the Bengal defense stymied the explosive Oilers at every turn. Scott Perry blocked the Houston punt and Willie Shelby recovered in the end zone for a Bengal lead, but the Oilers tied it with only 27 seconds left. In overtime, Ken Anderson, aching thigh and all, drove the Bengals 58 yards in 10 plays to set up the game-winning score. Chris Barr kicked the game winner for the first overtime victory in Cincinnati history, and the Bengals were on their way. The following week found the Bengals in Cleveland for a confrontation with the fired up first place Browns. The defense came up with another tremendous game, holding Cleveland to just seven points. Ken Anderson came through with another solid performance, completing 14 of 19, five of those to wide receiver Isaac Curtis. The game's leading rusher was Pete Johnson, who powered his way to the game's biggest touchdown. The Bengals defeated the Browns 10 to seven, thereby avenging their opening day loss and retying the series between the two at eight victories apiece. As Coach Johnson said following the game, through the years, there's been a lot of speculation and a lot written about the Cincinnati Bengals not hanging in there when the going gets tough. If this doesn't dispel that trash, I don't know what will. Next came an unfortunate trip to Minnesota and a game featuring two of the best quarterbacks in NFL history. Number 82, Billy Brooks caught seven passes for 198 yards, including a 94-yard touchdown, the longest in the eight-year history of the AFC. But the Bengals' injury-racked defense could not handle Fran Tarkenton, who completed 17 of 18 passes, breaking Ken Anderson's single-game efficiency record before breaking an ankle. Said defensive end Gary Burley, I hate to be the one to hurt Fran Tarkenton. Back home against the Miami Dolphins, the Bengals had to regroup again. Miami led seven to three when Ken Anderson called for a play that only he and center Bob Johnson knew was coming.
Then trailing by a point with two and a half minutes left, it was Anderson to Archie Griffin, to John McDaniel, to Ken Anderson, to Bob Trumpy, and the old flea flicker had won another big one for the Bengals. The following week, the New York Giants could not handle either the weather or the suddenly red-hot Bengal offense. Archie Griffin led the rushing attack, along with fullback Booby Clark, who refused to be stopped by anyone. Ken Anderson threw only four passes in the first half and completed all four, three of them for touchdowns. Two of those to blossoming star wide receiver Billy Brooks. The only other Bengal to catch a pass was rookie tight end Jim Corbett, who caught two, one of them a touchdown, as the Bengals finally pulled themselves above 500 for the season at six and five after 11 games. Week 12 in Kansas City, Ken Anderson threw two more touchdown passes as the Bengals beat the Chiefs 27 to seven. Pat McAnally caught the first touchdown pass of his pro career. Said McAnally, we're one behind the Steelers and we've got them next. If we play our game and they play theirs, we can win it. In Cincinnati on the season's next to last week, it was cold, bitter cold, with a wind chill factor of five degrees below zero. But with the Steelers in town and the AFC central title on the line, the weather was soon forgotten in the heat of battle. Painful blows were dealt and received on both sides, not the least of which left quarterback Ken Anderson writhing in agony once again. The first half was all defense, and the biggest single play was an interception touchdown by Lamar Parrish, which set the tone for the entire game. In the second half, Ken Anderson staged one of the season's most courageous performances. Behind playbook perfect pass protection by his offensive line, Ken Anderson overcame the elements in a 10 to 7 Steeler lead by passing for more than 300 yards, more than 200 of which came in the second half with the entire season hanging in the balance. Billy Brooks caught six passes for 166 yards, but the biggest play of the game was an Anderson bomb to Pat McAnally, which gave the Bengals a 17 to 10 lead and an all important 31 to 30 edge over Pittsburgh in the season series between the two. The Bengals had finally broken the Steelers three year jinx. But although they had just registered one of the most important victories in their 10 year history, they still needed one more victory to assure a division title and a spot in the playoffs. In the Houston Astrodome on the season's final day, the heroes of the previous week could not withstand the law of the AFC Central. After having ruined Cleveland's and Pittsburgh chances for a sweep, it was now up to the Houston Oilers, and in particular, their superstar Billy Johnson to ruin Cincinnati's chances. Billy Johnson's 263 yards of total offense spoiled the ending of an otherwise beautiful season for Cincinnati as the Oilers upset the Bengals 21 to 16.
1977 Bengals of Coach Bill Johnson were an unpredictable team. A poor start was followed by a searing stretch run and then the disappointment in Houston. But through it all, certain strengths stood out, not the least of which was a defensive backfield featuring the kind of players who specialize in the big play. Players with intelligence and leadership ability, players who forced the opposition into turnovers. Among the men who turned defense into offense were third-year safety man Marvin Cobb, number 24, eight-year cornerback Lamar Parrish, number 20, and six-year safety Tom Casanova, number 37. Good defensive backs are usually intimidators, and the Bengals had their share, featuring hitters like Melvin Morgan, number 21. For all-around value, a man like Ken Riley, number 13, is tough to beat anywhere on the field. In the victory over Pittsburgh, it was Ken Riley who made several game-saving plays for Cincinnati. Bengal linebackers consistently made life difficult for enemy quarterbacks. Capably backing up the starters were strong tacklers like Glenn Cameron, number 50 in the middle, or outside hit men like the rookie from Nebraska, number 59, Ray Phillips. On the left side was number 53, the aggressive third-year man from LSU, Bo Harris, one of the steadiest defensive performers of the season. On the right side was number 57, Reggie Williams, the big play man from Dartmouth who came up with three key interceptions and who continued to show the exciting, hard-hitting style of play which earned him a starting job during his rookie season. In the middle was number 55, Jim LeClaire, and the big six-year veteran from North Dakota continued to be one of the top middle linebackers in the NFL. The cornerstone of the Bengal defense was the defensive line, which was a fine blend of experience and youthful exuberance. The pass rush poured in on opposition quarterbacks from all sides, with experienced hands like defensive ends Ken Johnson, number 80, and 10-year veteran Coy Bacon, number 79. Cincinnati defenses of the future will be anchored by three strong young linemen. Second-year defensive end Gary Burley of Pittsburgh, number 67, is a coming NFL star. While at the tackle positions, the two top draft choices of 1977 will be chasing down NFL quarterbacks for years to come. Although they were only rookies in 77, it was tough to fool number 73, Eddie Edwards, and number 75, Wilson Whitley. With a brilliant pair of young tackles to build around, Bengals defenses will be founded on strength far into the future.
The Bengal special teams featured the clutch kicking of placement man Chris Barr of Penn State and punter Pat McAnally of Harvard. Barr was the AFC's third leading scorer, while McAnally led the entire NFL in net punting average. Good special teams mean fearless young men like Jerry Anderson, Mike Cobb, Steve Holden, Mike Wells, Rick Walker, and special teams captain Tony Davis, number 25. Special teams sometimes produce the stars of tomorrow, the kind who make it on sheer guts and determination. The Bengals have always depended upon a solid offensive line, beginning with the original Bengal, center Bob Johnson, number 54. The core of guards was characteristically deep in 77, with a now retired John Shinner's number 64, or Greg Fairchild filling in for Dave Lapham, or Glenn Bouchnock, number 74. The offensive tackle positions were capably manned by seven-year veteran Vernon Holland, number 76, second-year pro Ron Hunt, or the nine-year mainstay from Ohio State, Rufus Mays, number 71. These are the men whose job it is to protect the quarterback and to open the way for the runners. The addition of rookie Pete Johnson meant that the Bengals could feel the Ohio State connection with Johnson at fullback and the elusive Mr. Archie Griffin running from the halfback slot. The Ohio State connection combined for more than 1,400 yards of total offense as Griffin was among the team leaders in receiving while Johnson led in rushing. Another dangerous receiver out of the backfield was Lenville Elliott, number 36, who caught 29 passes during the season. Ken Anderson found a variety of other gifted receivers in tight end Bob Trumpy, along with wide receivers like the six foot, six inch Pat McAnally, and the team's leading receiver in 77, Billy Brooks, who also averaged 20 yards per reception, best in the AFC. Add to these the numerous talents of perennial all-pro Icy Curtis, who was injured at midseason, and the Bengals have the kind of ability, speed, and depth to frighten any opponent. These, then, were the Cincinnati Bengals of 1977, a team with a taste of a championship, and a team with the kind of spirit and desire necessary to bring Cincinnati fans a future filled with the best that the world of professional football has to offer. <laughs>